27 to 10. Welcome back. Now, many South Africans will relate to this. Since the coronavirus outbreak, hospital visits have been prohibited, making it difficult for families to check on the status of their loved ones. Now, NetCare has launched a support line to keep the next of kin informed. The group chief executive officer, Dr. Richard Friedland, is joining us now from Johannesburg to talk to us about their new Family Connect line. Dr. Friedland, good morning and thank you very much uh, for your time uh, uh, this morning. Yeah, it's very tough, you know, when your loved one is in a hospital, especially if they, they are positive and you don't know what's happening. And then eventually when you get that call, you have a sense of dread uh, about that call that comes. And you've decided to enable families to stay in touch uh, since Monday. How is it going so far? It's going very good morning, Dan, and thank you for the opportunity. It's going very, very well. Obviously, this is a pandemic that threatens to dehumanize all of us, and we need to maintain our humanity. And especially, as you said, when uh, loved ones can't see uh, their own loved ones in hospital, they're anxious about it. Many people have unfortunately succumbed to this terrible virus. The levels of anxiety are almost debilitating. And it's often difficult to, uh, when they phone our wards to hear our nurses who are all dressed up in PPE and masks and visors. And so what we've done is start a family connect line. Uh, next of kin can phone this line. Uh, we'll relay the message to the hospital and a dedicated professional, either a social worker in our hospital or what we call patient liaison officers, will get back to the family on a daily basis with an update. And we think this will bring a lot of reassurance both to patients and their families. And we'll also be able to relay messages between families and their loved ones in hospital and, and from, from patients to their loved ones for those that can't communicate. Yeah, as we start talking, I'm going to ask, uh, hopefully my producer can hear me, to put up that number on our strap there on the screen, which is 0800 111 now, 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 you've got social workers that you've employed who are manning this line 24-7. Am I correct? Uh, Dan, it's not 24-7, but it is seven days a week. So we operate it from uh, 8 till 6, Monday to Friday, and from 8 till 5, Saturday and Sunday. If the need arises, we'll do it on a 24-hour basis. Um, we've got social workers in our hospitals because often there are difficult conversations to be had. Some of our patients do deteriorate. And in those specific circumstances, we do allow visits on a compassionate basis. Now, we don't want any... Yeah, no, Sorry. Yeah, you allow on a compassionate basis, I understand. Sorry to cut in you there. How does it work? I mean, I call 0800 111266. I know, I mean, you, you, you are the CEO, but at an operational level, what happens now? I phone this number. Who's on the other line, is this, on the other side of the line, is a social worker. What do they need from me to enable that communication with my loved one? Yes, absolutely. So when you get admitted to hospital, uh, your case number is SMS to you as a patient, but also to your registered next of kin. And all your next of kin need to do is to be able to quote from that SMS the case number, obviously from a confidentiality uh, point of view, we need to know that we're speaking to your registered next of kin and or your name and surname and which hospital you're in. And then we will direct that query to the hospital. It comes through our NetCare appointment appoint med center. This is a center that makes doctor's appointments for all patients. And we will then direct that to the specific hospital, to a social worker or a patient liaison officer, and they will be in immediate contact with the next of kin. And so all you need to do is to quote um, the case number uh, that the patient has been given and that the next of kin has been um, uh, SMSed. If you don't have it, you can quote other details. And if you're not a registered next of kin, and I'll come back to why that's important, um, we can get permission uh, for you uh, to get the details on a patient. We had a, a terrible case, a tragic case yesterday, where a gentleman phoned in uh, to find out how a young uh, woman was doing. He wasn't the next of kin. Unfortunately, both the mother and father had passed away from COVID, and uh, the daughter was the sole survivor. And obviously, in those cases, 
uh, we will bend the rules in order to facilitate access to this kind of information. Yeah, but, but you generally. Yeah, but you try generally at all times to maintain confidentiality, confidentiality and the dignity of, of the people affected is very important. Uh, do you facilitate direct uh, speaking between the uh, patient who might be able to speak to their loved one or all communication is through your social workers? No, Dan, you raise a very good point and absolutely we have iPads uh, in our various wards, we can do FaceTime with loved ones, we can uh, use mobile phones, and that's the first prize, is for patients to be able to speak directly to their loved ones. Obviously, in terms of their clinical condition, um, this line provides a clinical update, but to the extent that we can uh, facilitate FaceTiming and or mobile phoning, uh, we certainly try to do that between families, and it brings a huge amount of relief uh, to patients. Often patients have debilitating anxiety, they can't see the nurses and doctors because we're all in PPE with visors and masks and spacesuits. and so being able to hear a loved one's voice over the phone is very, very reassuring. Now, NetCare is only just one of the private hospital uh, providers in the country and this is only you who are, who's doing this currently. And how many hospitals, by the way, do you have uh, uh, across the country? We have 54 hospitals uh, uh, across South Africa, and we have just under 3,000 patients uh, who are COVID positive in our hospitals at the moment. And, and this facility is available across all your units across the country, all your facilities currently as we speak. Yeah. And, 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 your, and, and your peers, I'm not going to say competitors, I mean, it's the healthcare sector, you're providing an essential service. Are you aware if the others are thinking the same way or are they doing the same? This is just an, an, an overriding industry question I'm putting to you. Dan, I'm sure that uh, all of our colleagues and all of healthcare workers and operators in the sector are doing their very, very best to try to communicate effectively with um, okay. uh, ones. I think everyone's trying their, their very best. I'm not sure what they're all doing, yeah. Okay, final question to you, Dr. Friedland. In your press release, which I saw, you've deployed about 30 social workers, and for the number of units you've got currently across the country and running this seven-day-a-week operation, eight to six weekdays, you said, and in the weekends it's eight to five, are you intending to employ more social workers? Yes, absolutely. We've got not only social workers, but we've got uh, already existing what we call patient liaison officers in all our hospitals. And in some of our hospitals, we've deployed four social workers. Up in Limpopo, where we have a massive surge at uh, Neke for Lawson Hospital, we've actually got four social workers. And uh, just to be able to assist with uh, communication with families, and we are looking to bolster the number of social workers we have quite considerably. In fact, double that uh, number in uh, the coming two weeks. Okay, so that number is 0800 It is on our screens, at the bottom of our screens this moment, for NetCare. This is a NetCare Family Connect line, and there are 54 facilities across uh, the country. Currently, you said you've got 3,000 patients, do you say? who are COVID-19 positive uh, in the net care facilities. Uh, are you seeing the numbers going up? Uh, I think the lockdown has helped uh, enormously as has the curfew and um, the ban on the sale of uh, alcohol. So we are seeing the numbers uh, stabilize. They're certainly coming down in the Eastern Cape. They're stabilizing in the Western Cape. We've still got very high numbers in KwaZulu-Natal, here in the Gauteng and in the Limpopo province. Uh, and we're hoping that we've reached a kind of peak and that these numbers will uh, begin to plateau and hopefully reduce uh, in the coming days and weeks then. And your staff is coping? Our staff are exhausted, to be honest. Uh, we've been at this uh, for nearly 11 months, and uh, they're on the front line. They're the real heroes. We don't need to look at uh, any Netflix or Showmax or Hollywood. They're in our, the corridors and wards of our hospitals, in our theatres, and in that I include our porters, our caterers, security staff, admin and support. And uh, uh, the work they're doing is remarkable, but they are tired, and it's been a, a long, long time, and clearly 
we need a vaccine for our healthcare workers uh, as soon as possible. Dr. Freeland, thank you very much for your time. And please pass our word of gratitude to the frontline workers in your space, the Netcare, who are continuing to do this sterling work in the front line, risking their own lives in terms of keeping our loved ones and uh, our, your patients there safe. And uh, we are really grateful here on ENCA for that, uh, that sterling work that uh, they are doing.